video thread lift per procedure. We already talked about the pertinent facial anatomy. So now what we're going to discuss is as far as the demographics and the age appropriate. So as we can see here, the most age appropriate is going to be a demographic age group of 30 to 65. Does that mean that anyone less than 30 or older than 65 is not an ideal candidate? No, absolutely not. Because there are patients that come in that are actually even in their 20s, just as they come in for dermal fillers or lip filler or any kind of procedure for under eyes. Those patients also can be proper candidates if they have the need and skin type, what other procedures they're doing, that you can possibly do PDO threads for the lips, you can do threads for the under eyes, you can do threads for other parts of the face, depending also if they're already having facial ptosis as far as the skin. You also may see that in some people who are runners. So there is no set age as to what's the most appropriate. This is just a guideline. And anyone over 65, I have seen plenty of patients that come into my office that are over 65, who've taken good care of their skin, they're doing their constant lasers, they're doing their skincare, and they have great quality and they get great results. And I still do PDO threads for them, especially because of the fact that even the smoothing threads are good for almost everyone of any age, because of the fact that they will constantly stimulate collagen. And when you're stimulating collagen, it actually thickens the skin improves the quality of the skin, the texture, the pores, the fine lines, and it brings back some of the lost elasticity because after the age of 25, we all start losing collagen and elastin in our skin naturally. So PDO threads is something that we can also use in order to help that in conjunction with all the other aesthetic procedures in our aesthetic toolbox, such as when we're doing PRP, microneedling, whether it's radio frequency or non-radio frequency microneedling, as well as doing your dermal fillers and your neuromodulators. So PDO threads is another adjunctive therapy. Preferable to have no prior plastic surgery in the area being treated, and it's okay to have previous injections with neurotoxins greater than two weeks prior. So that being said, does that mean that if somebody has had a facelift that they are not a candidate? That's absolutely not true because of the fact that patients who have had facelifts want to maintain the quality and the results of the facelift. The rule of thumb though is that if a patient has had a facelift, I will not go ahead and do any kind of an aesthetic procedure on them before they one year post facelift. And why is that? Because of the fact that they still have facial swelling, they're still healing, they're still recovering, and they still have not gotten their full, complete result. And at the same time, in our world of plastic surgery, what we tend to do is that we will reassess the patients, and within that one year, patients, if they need anything to be fixed, tweaked, or readdressed, then the surgeon will do that. So you really do not want to be introducing any possible procedure to them at that point, because if there is any kind of a complication, it will be a result of the procedure that you did, even if it's not truly directly a result of the procedure that you're offering them. So it's best to just steer away from that till it's been a year later. Now, as far as having neurotoxins or dermal fillers, I, in my practice, will go ahead and do the threads and the fillers in the same visit. The neurotoxin, I usually will do and then have them come back two weeks later in order to get their PDO threads. If they want to do the PDO threads first, especially because of the fact then I want to see what their results are, then I will have them wait two weeks. So two weeks is the ideal time between procedures. The candidates that are some or all can be considered as far as patient models, if they have mild to moderate uh, ptosis of the cheek areas, if they have mild to moderate jowling and descent of the lower third of the face, uh, brow ptosis, if they have neck cutaneous bands, which we refer to as the platysmal bands, there's techniques for that using the PDO threads in combination with your neuromodulator. Also the crepiness of the skin, that's an area that's great for in order to be using the monofilaments. Uh, mild to moderate ptosis of other body areas, that's a very advanced technique, which is also great results. And we also have to make sure that basically patients have realistic expectations and we give them realistic goals in order for them to get the most optimal results.